Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's Word. This morning we're going to uh, hear about the great cloud of witnesses that uh, Hebrews talks about at the end of chapter 11 and beginning of chapter 12. We begin our worship by singing our opening hymn, 906, O Day of Rest and Gladness. We turn to page 219 for the Order of Matins. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 119, verses 81 through 88. Um, it's in your front part of your hymnal. The psalms are simply in numerical order. But the fun part is Psalm 119 is the longest chapter of the Bible. And so you're going to find pages with only the verses on them. And so Psalm 119, verse 81, begins with the heading Kaf, K-A-P-F. And we will read this responsively half verse by half verse. That means I will read up to the red asterisk, and you will respond with the rest of the verse. So we read Psalm 119, verses 81 through 88. My soul longs for your salvation. My eyes long for your promise. For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. How long must your servant endure? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. All your commandments are sure. They have almost made an end of me on earth. In your steadfast love, give me life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. I now invite any children forward for a special message. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
Oh, wow, you guys sound like you're ready for my message this morning. That's awesome. I got a question. Does anyone here play tag? Anyone ever play tag? Yeah? When you play tag, do you try to go as slow as possible? No? What do you try to do? Go as fast as possible. Why? You don't want to get tagged? Okay. Or you want to tag someone else. Yes. Okay, how about this? Anyone ever here ever run a race? Yeah? All right. Um, do you try to win the race or lose the race? You try to win the race. So when you try to win the race, you go as slow as possible, right? No! Oh, man, oh, man, Landon, what do you do? Oh, you go as fast as you can. That's right. Some people like to say that life is like a race. The epistle reading says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. God has placed each of us in a race. How should we run that race? How should we live this life God has given us the best we can? Of course, God doesn't leave us alone on this race. He sent us Jesus, Jesus who died and rose for you and me. He gives you a faith so that you can run this race knowing that Jesus is with you. Jesus has already run a race. And one day, at the end of your race, you will get to see Jesus face to face. And you'll get to see him sitting on the throne of God. But while we wait for that day, we run the race God has given us. And we do that by hearing God's word, by loving others, and we run that race that God is giving us, knowing that Jesus will be there at the end for each of you. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for giving us a race to run. Help us to run our best, looking forward to seeing your son who died and rose for us. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks everyone. You can return to your seats. We continue our worship by singing our hymn of the day, hymn 745, In God My Faithful God.
Our Old Testament reading comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 16 through 29, beginning on page 829. Our Old Testament reading is Jeremiah's prophecy against the false prophets. These false prophets weren't preaching a message given to them by God. Instead, they prophesied a message the people wanted to hear. But Jeremiah is called to tell the truth no matter how hard it might seem. Jeremiah proclaims, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth. A whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophet. Yet they ran. I did not speak to them. Yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? But the prophet who has a dream, tell the dream. But let him who has my word, speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? O Lord, have mercy on us. Our epistle reading comes to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 beginning at verse 17 and going through chapter 12, verse 3, beginning on page 1292. And our epistle reading is a continuation of the great faith chapter, Hebrews 11. It mentions some of the heroes of our faith, but they were all commended by God through faith. Then at the end, we are reminded that Jesus is the beginner and perfecter of your faith. We read, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to even raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? 
For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that others might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. In all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us than apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint heart. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 49 through 53, on page 1115. And this can be a gospel, a difficult reading for some people. It's easy to understand that Jesus is bringing division. But the key to understand that division takes place between the world and the church, between believers and unbelievers. Jesus proclaims, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. O Lord, have mercy on us. We turn to page 221 for the common responsory. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who is in your great cloud of witnesses? Here at Trinity, who is part of that great cloud of witnesses? Those that have walked the path Jesus laid out for them, and is now in heaven awaiting that final resurrection 
reward. Or perhaps, who is your great cloud of witnesses in your own family? Now maybe I should stop here and say what I mean by a great cloud of witnesses. I'm not talking about someone's spirit in the sky watching over you when you do something good or faithful. I'm talking about the people, the believers, whose stories you still tell to others to this day. And they aren't drinking stories. Their stories about their faith and faithfulness. How someone endured the faith despite the obstacles. How someone held on to the faith despite the world turning against some of them. How someone was faithful in and out, day after day, week after week, no matter what. How there are how there are people who run the race of faith with endurance. And you just don't know how they did it for so long or so faithfully. This great cloud of witnesses are important because it feels like this church is standing here because of those people. Almost as if we're standing upon the shoulders of faithful people before us. And those after us could be standing upon theirs, and then our shoulders as well. But this past week I was asked an important question by a lady of a certain age that shall remain nameless and ageless. Pastor, what will happen to the church when all of us older people die off? And if we look around with our eyes, we can probably all answer that question. And that answer probably doesn't look very good. The numbers of our reality are pretty clear. It isn't pretty. Our worship numbers are down, down, down. It seems like there's not enough people to do the work of the church. The younger people seem to be absent in general. When we ask for volunteers, it's always the same 10% who try to answer the call. Everyone else seems to have something more important more promising, more practical, more money-related, and more worldly. And our sinfulness and selfishness can get in the way of these things pretty quickly. We focus on what we can't do instead of what we can do. We sit in our corner of the pew and we grumble and complain that something isn't being done, but then when asked to help, we say, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. We're constantly blaming someone else for this problem or that problem. Or we think we have the solution, but when others don't agree, we throw up our hands, we pack up our things, we walk away for good. Or we don't recognize the mistakes that we're making, or we hang on to the things, or certain things for far too long. Or we lament the world isn't what it was back in the church's heyday. Now there's a lot of reasons for why the church is where she is today. They are serious and straining. And it's easy to get lost in those minefields. And the answers to some of these problems aren't easy answers. They require sacrifice. They require us to live by faith. In fact, perhaps the best answer to that lady's question is to say, we are trusting in God. God. And that's how we should view this text as by faith. Because sometimes we don't see ourselves as part of this great cloud of witnesses. Oh, that was so and so. Oh, I can't compete with what he did or what she said. I'm not at the same level as who you might call it. But do you want to hear the truth? Those people who you might idolize in the faith, the people whose shoulders you stand upon today, probably said the same thing about themselves. They were far from perfect people. They all had their flaws and shortcomings. And the church definitely had her struggles back then as well. But we might forget about them or set them aside when we remember them. We might think, I'm not anywhere close to being like those giants of the faith before me. 
and nothing could be further from the truth. Hebrews 11 goes through an amazing list of faithful people. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel are all listed by name. And there's plenty more not listed by name. And then there's some great events. The, the Exodus event, the falling of the walls of Jericho, the persecuted, the tortured, the weak ones made strong, and on and on the actions continue. And all of these people and actions have one strong connection. By faith. By faith, Abraham was willing to sacrifice his beloved promised son. By faith, Moses was able to lead the people of God out of Egypt. By faith, Rahab, a prostitute, you want to talk about a sinner, a prostitute was saved. By faith, they did these faithful actions and endured whatever came their way. And that same faith is also your faith. Hebrews tells us, each of us, to look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Some translations will say the author and perfecter of our faith. How cool is that, the author and perfecter? The one who begins it and the one who makes it whole, perfects it. You then, by faith, are in the same cloud of witnesses as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, not because of how good you are or anything like that, but because Jesus is the author and perfecter of your faith, just as he was the author and perfecter of their faith. You have the same faith as those saints before you, the same ones that faithfully prayed in these pews, that built these walls, that changed these light bulbs, that found many different ways to serve Jesus and other people with the gospel of Jesus. But think about that for a second. You have that same faith. And I think that's amazing an amazing way to think about your faith, that you have a similar faith as Abraham. You have a similar faith as Moses. You have a similar faith as that parent or friend that you say, I don't know how she does it. I don't know how he keeps the faith. You have the same faith. You have the same faith because God has given that faith to you. It's from Jesus who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Your faith in Jesus dying and rising is a gift from God. The Holy Spirit has brought you to that foot of the cross. And along with doubting Thomas, you say amazing words. My Lord and my God. Your faith clings to that truth, even though you don't see it all. You, do, you just believe that Jesus, the crucified Lord, is now seated at the right hand of God on the throne of God. This cannot be your own doing. It has to be the gift of God. And just as it was a gift to those heroes of the faith, so it's a gift to you. And imagine what that means for you. Your faith stubbornly says, God made this world out of nothing when the rest of the world laughs at you. Your faith clings to Jesus and his salvation when all the hope of the world is lost. You keep coming to worship despite the reality around you saying it's a sinking ship. You believe that one day Jesus will be coming soon, despite the fact that the church has been saying that for almost 2,000 years. When disaster strikes, by faith, you pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And then by faith, after you pray, you get to work. I mean, you do this all by faith. Faith freely given to you. A faith that you share with your faith heroes, even though they aren't in this building anymore. But you know, you believe that one day, you will join them in that heavenly chorus. But for now, 
for now, you run the race that God has set before you. You run it with the faith that's been given to you graciously by God. A faith, although it can move mountains, it enables you to endure what is before you. All the while focusing on the problems, but you focus on the problems by knowing that the solution is in Christ Jesus. Jesus the author and perfecter of your faith. Believing that whenever that finish line comes for you, it'll be glorious and those concerns you had will be gone for good. And then someone else will be standing on your shoulders as you are part of their great cloud of witnesses. But this is all by faith given to you by Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We now continue our worship by singing hymn 575, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. We turn to the back cover for the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to 941 for our Te Deum. We praise you and acknowledge you, O God.
seated for our offering. We turn to page 227 for the order of prayer, beginning with the Kyrie. Please stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work, and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Gracious God, our fathers in the faith gave a good confession of your truth before the powers of the world. In the spirit of Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses, strengthen our hearts in the days of division to confess in our words and lives the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of hosts, you have inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amidst the lies of false prophets. Arm your servants in our day with the power of your Holy Spirit to contradict the lies of the enemy and build up your church upon the eternal foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you settle the solitary in families in order to nurture their faith and train them in righteousness. Bless and strengthen parents to bring up their children to resist temptation and to endure all things for the sake of your name, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God Almighty, behold our nation and all those in authority in your mercy and replenish them by your grace, that all who receive the sword would bear it according to your word, always inclining to your will and walking in your way. Grant that we might lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty, and we especially pray that you would bring peace to the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, grant healing to the sick, especially Stacy, Marcy, Myron, Jerry, Helen, Carol, Lynn, Helen, Rich, Linda, Marion, Annette, Janelle, Chrissy, Shirley, 
bridge, and I will not. Give strength to the weak, endurance to bear up under trial, patience to await his deliverance, and peace at the last. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Son promises division even as he promises salvation. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism in the communion of the saints above all other relations in this world, even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Lord, in your mercy. God of our fathers, you bless your church with the enduring witness of your saints, who now rest from their labors. As we continually join the heavenly chorus, grant that we would share their faith in Christ now and to life's end. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we give you thanks for Trinity Lutheran School. Bless our golf outing with good weather today, generous golfers, and delicious food. Be with our teachers as they report on Monday. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we remain standing for our closing hymn, 809, Great is Thy Faith.
Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's Word by faith in Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. A couple of announcements. For those of you here for the golf outing, we're excited. Looks like we're going to have a nice, uh, cool day for our golf outing. Last year we got poured on, so uh, this year it does not look like that's going to happen. So, uh, so thanks, to, thanks to Jim, Dave, and all our volunteers who have put that on for us uh, today at 1 o'clock. Um, a couple other announcements. One, next Sunday at 4 o'clock, Team Trinity is going to meet, and they're going to talk and present on their youth gathering trip. So, so anyone's welcome to join us in the basement at 4 o'clock next Sunday. Uh, also, uh, we have an outdoor service on Sunday, August 28th. We're going to have a potluck meal. There's going to be pizza rants, uh, chicken, and uh, potato wedges as well. And we're also, after the service, going to have to have a special voters meeting. So... Uh, we're going to have, hopefully, a somewhat short voter, special voters meeting to talk about teachers for the upcoming school year. So, uh, so that'll be on August 28th. Any other announcements? Marlene. Okay. <laughs> All right, so choir is going to begin practice on Wednesday, September 21st. Barb. All right. Thanks, Barb. So, yeah, uh, Bethany is going to continue her food drive for our Blessing Box for another week. So if you haven't brought non-perishable food items and we're planning to, you still have time. Other announcements? None? Then let's conclude the Bible verse of the month. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. God's blessings to you this week.